Okay, uh, chapter one. Uh, chapter one will be uh, on a bit of an overview uh, to uh, put everything on the right uh, perspective. There's some uh, definitions that we want to uh, share next so that all of us are on the same page. Uh, then there are a few, uh, uh, well, I would say technical terms that I will also share so that you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, because remember, the motions uh, we are going to, in spacecraft dynamics control, we are going to be motions, motions of the missing body. So uh, there is a lot of difference between what you have been exposed to in space before and uh, in this particular subject now. So let's, uh, let's uh, uh, go to the uh, part uh, discussing on the missing context. Now, uh, translation and rotational motion. Remember translation motion you have been exposed to. That is orbital motion. It's already done. Uh, you have been uh, trained uh, to understand what is translation, uh, translation motion from one point to another point. You can now you can now understand how to insert a particular rigid body from planet Earth to the particular orbit. Now this particular subject, spacecraft dynamics control, will teach you. From that particular point, how am I going to operate or fly this particular rigid body? And remember, your task is basically planet Earth. You know you can do Hohmann transfer, and you know you can put in basically the exact orbit. Then you ensure that the calculation of uh, delta V is good enough, basically, for you to orientate the planet Earth. So this is what is you have calculated already. Good. Now, you, this is done. The calculation is done, so it can it can do this for you. But it is still in the orbit. Okay. In order for it to be the stable and to maybe point or look at planet Earth, space that is important. So this motion is called rotational motion. You can stay in the same orbit. You, are, you will be insensitive towards those uh, orbital mechanics, you will be insensitive because orbital mechanics is going to treat you as a point mass. Is yours as a point? It's a point mass. Spacecraft dynamics control is going to treat you as a rigid body. So when you have a, your rigid body, then you have inertia. So then when you have inertia, in a point mass, this is the whole lump, it's just a mass. So no matter, you can just imagine it's a sphere. No matter how it is going to turn, as long as it's in orbit, space mechanics see it is perfect. That's it. So space mechanics job, you have done. You have done this. Now, it's not good enough. You need to make sure it's stable. Then I need to treat this as a report. So, throughout this, Reservation, you will hear words like inertia because it is a rigid body. So, when we are talking about rigid body, we need to know what is the inertia. Not only the mass, but we need to know the inertia. And we, we have the inertia, then we can, we can do the kinematic stepping. We can do the kinematic stepping. Yeah? Uh, okay, so therefore, if I see system, I refer to Spacecraft satellite. So system means when I when I say spacecraft dynamics control system. So you know the satellite system. So please, that is the term. Now the new. So this whole system is going to uh, remember the control system. When I say this control system, so it's a control system, satellite control system. So when I have control system, I should have defined the controller, the plan, the measurement, and basically the input. Okay. So let's see, the motion of the satellite. Translation motion is basically three degree of freedom. You have position and velocity. Okay? You can have either position or velocity. That means what? Three degree of freedom, right? You have R1, R2, R3. Position. Velocity X, velocity Y, velocity Z. Done. That is translation motion. That's all what we have learned in space mechanics. Okay. Now extend to rotational motion, but also three degree of freedom, attitude and angular rate. Okay. Also have to 
quantities. Attitude is just like that. This all rotation. Okay, so one point. This is it. This is translation. You have angular ring. When you have a rotation, then you are going to have if it's a constant, then you will have an angular ring. This one. This is also an angular motion. Because you are not moving anywhere. You are on the same spot, then plus you have attitude. Then you have also the ring. How this happens? When you have your attitude, attitude is an angle. Derivative of attitude will give you rate of angle. Right? Radian per second. Radian. Rate will be radian per second. What do you mean by radian per second? So radian per second is actually is velocity. This one. So it's already have this motion. Along this axis. So if you have three axis, this guy is this axis is also, and this is also. But remember, when this rotates, what happens? This one will go up. When this rotates, what happens? This two is going to go up. When this rotates, this one is going to go up. Okay? So it's very, very important. It doesn't mean that this rotates and this. If you look at him, he's not going to affect himself. He is just rotating. But he is going to tip the other two axis because we have three axis. So if, if there is a rate, then it's even worse because there's a rate. You keep on doing it, it can be the other way. Rate. But if it's just an attitude, there is okay, rate is zero, but attitude is one degree. But there's no rate. Zero. From time from time zero to one, there will be a rate. Rate of changes from zero to one degree. That's rate. But after time one, let's say there is no rate, if zero is stopped there. So your axis instead of like this, it will be like that. It's stop. Now what you have to do now? You have to correct it. Why we have to correct? Assume this is a axis. Normally this is a radial. Radial pointing your yaw. Okay? Better to do this. This is your yaw. This is your flight direction. We will uh, define that later again, clearly. But for today, planet Earth, your road, pitch. Okay? You are flying this way. Every time your yaw is looking at the planet Earth. Now, what happens if this rotates? Where are you looking? Okay, uh, this one. This towards to planet Earth we call Nade. Nade pointing, huh? Nade is towards to center of planet Earth. Assume I'm going to do this. 180 degrees in this. It is going to be what? Zenith. From center to sky. Out. Zenith pointing. If you look at Zenith pointing, are you looking at planet Earth? No, you are not. You have to come back. So this correction must be done. This is what is important. Okay? So we will define that. We will write the equation. We will understand the equation. We, we do a bit of derivation. Because this is, uh, of course, uh, in uh, the uh, basic subjects you don't have to derive. You can end up using. But this is actually an elective subject. Good to know what is the derivation. So we will do that. Then let's see how it's going to develop. Again, temperature of satellite is, of course, is important. Uh, in the uh, system, reason being uh, performance of those, all those actuators, especially sensors, the measurement. Very sensitive. So, uh, if you learn uh, satellite technology, uh, thermal control system is extremely important. Even as you know, that uh, a maximum temperature of 50 60 degrees is a lot already for satellite. It is not too. It's a lot already because of this 
sensor. Sensor is very good sensor. Okay, translation motion is a okay, orbital motion. All this you should have learned in space mechanics. So you look at the actual difference. Translation motion is take position and velocity of the spacecraft center. Now, orbit changes are possible only with the back bounds. Let's observe the constraints huh? due to Newton's law, we know, Kepler's law, we have introduced. Newton's law has told us basically how to establish the gravitational relation between two bodies. Okay? Kepler's law has told us how can we stay in planet Earth? Okay. Three, we got three rules, remember? Okay? So that is done. Huh? So, uh, another important thing is also Newton has helped Kepler literally to solve his equation. Without Newton's finding, we can't solve uh, Kepler's equation. So, both these are very, very uh, close to the using. Okay, good. Then uh, you have uh, open loop control from the ground, very slow dynamic. This is basically, remember your station keeping towards the end of us, uh, orbital mechanics, uh, you would have done the exercise of station keeping. How to station keep, how to do a north correction, south correction, east, west uh, corrections that you would have uh, gone through. So this is the open loop from the ground. That means you tell it what to do. Why it is like that? Why we have to do that? The difference is this, huh? Attitude control is 24-7. When you found that satellite is already doing attitude control. There is no time it is uh, it's stopping. There is no switch off. It's already doing attitude control. It's sensing always. Are you in the right part? Sensing always. Sensing, sensing. But orbit control, it is not 24-7. Even in orbital mechanics, you have learned. Once in a year, for example, inclination correction, not often. We don't do that often because we can't afford it. In fact, the nature of those disturbances also disturbing not us, not severely every day. The cumulative for a year, yes. Then we do one correction. In a year, it's fine for two corrections maximum. And it is going to be very costly. Uh, because a lot of things need to do. And we know for the fact that the last thing that we want to do in space mechanics, which is the orbit correction, is inclination change. Right? Inclination change is very, very costly. So that means what? So much of fuel you are going to use. So you don't go often. Uh, or even altitude change, you don't go often. Because too much of fuel. But at Attitude business, attitude business is 24-7. Can I tell you that it is not even 24-7, it is every second. The system is on. It is just like this. When you on the light, is that is attitude control system. Okay? That is that is attitude control system. So nothing else. So it has to be that one because you have to keep on sensing where you are. Active control system, please do understand that uh, uh, a good uh, overview for you is this. Uh, orbit control system, and uh, uh, it's very different compared to active control, active control system, assume that your, your eyes, when you want to go up, you need to open your eyes every time. So I, when I want to fly, I need to open my eyes. Otherwise, I do not know whether I am just doing this and flying, but as far as orbit control is fine, there's nothing wrong. But active control has a lot of problems. So I need to open my eyes. So I need to open, if you walk, you open your eyes every time, right? So ACS or active control system is like that. That's the difference. Important, rotational motion. Now, we come to attitude motion. Let us define and understand this very, very well. Now, uh, 
Rotational motion is rotational state. Yeah? It's basically it's attitude state and angular rate. That's only two components important. Just orbital mechanics, two components. Here are two components. Frame is actually with respect to the body frame. Huh? It's a body fixed frame. I will explain that it's body so with respect to the reference body frame. Okay. So just like your uh, space mechanics, you have a geocentric coordinate system. That means from planet Earth, then you have one coordinate system. It can be, let's say, in the LQ. So you have an XYZ. So you, you must have at least two coordinate systems basically to define where you are, correct? Otherwise, you can't. So you must have one reference and you must have one current. Likewise, you need also the same thing here. Okay. On what autonomy, which is a closed loop operation. So when you talk about closed loop operation, you don't interfere. It is an intelligent system. Because why you can do close loop? Because you do sensing 24-7. Every second you do sensing, it's supposed to be an autonomous system. But if you do a ground command, that is not a uh, uh, closed system. That is basically you decide. So ground station comes in there. Ground operator, ground system operator, they will decide when they want to do the correction. It's all decision that you make. Okay? So that is the reason inclination change. It is not optimized. You decide as an operator from ground station, altitude change, excessively change. All these changes in, you want to change your orbital element. Except for that, you don't change your, uh, what is that, uh, uh, you, you change the inclination control, but you just don't change all at one go because you can't just see it for it. Yeah? So that is extremely, extremely important. Alright. Now, uh, vision parameter basically, what, why it is so important? Huh? Because the payload must always look at maybe planet Earth. Let's say you have a camera. You want the camera to always look at the planet Earth. So, you, can you do this? Okay, every every second there is one man is looking out there. Whether this camera is correctly like to me or not. Then no. Then after, after you need to go back, right? Then another man comes in. It's like, a, you know, running a relay. So, we can't afford to do this. So, that is the reason we need to mind that. So, in this basically, all that is done. Okay, now uh, attitude slew maneuvers. Just, just please mark this. Slew maneuvers is sometimes come from ground. We decide we want to do slew maneuvers. Okay, and it's likewise safe mode, etc. We decide. The rest is basically autonomous. So technically, you can sleep this way with the anti control system on board or anti and orbit control system on board. You can sleep peacefully. We just have to, uh, the telemetry will tell you the, whether the system is healthy or not. Okay, now this is important. I need to define two coordinate systems in order for me to move on with this subject throughout this semester. So let me clearly define to you. Center is set of geocentric, right? Now, from here, let's say I define another coordinate system here. I just simply call it X, Y, Z. This is good enough for me to define uh, to uh, to do orbital mechanics because this will be fixed. Geocentric is fixed. Here is fixed. Okay. So here fixed, here moving, right? Correct. Done. When this thing happen, I can sense this, right? I can use GPS basically to correct this. We will, we will do orbit control towards the end. So, this coordinate center, geocentric coordinate and XYZ coordinate here is going to take care of this system. Which system? The orbit system. For additive system, I don't need geocentric. What I need, I need to have the body coordinate. I need to know what is this, okay, this is, we must have a coordinate here. I have this coordinate and I must have a coordinate which is fixed here, which rotates throughout. Okay? Now, 
And this particular coordinate in, in actual control system, we call it local vertical, local horizontal. The difference between, now, remember this, remember that I told you there was another coordinate here, x, y, z, which is important to establish your position with respect to geocentric coordinate system in orbital mechanics. It is still important. The difference between that coordinate here is that has a z up, yeah, up. The y, y, y is basically is up. Same. X. You can have x. You can you can have r one. Say one, two, and three. That is practically is related to the orbital mechanics coordinate system. Okay. Now the difference is here is when you have defined local vertical, local horizontal is practically is this one. Now this local vertical, local horizontal is fixed. It doesn't move with respect to the body. Okay? What moves with respect to the body is the body coordinate, x, y, z. Okay? So, please understand. Two coordinates is involved here. Local, vertical, local, horizontal. So, this is, I can define you now here. This is your pitch roll. Roll is flight direction. Uh, flight direction. This, so please do fix this. This is for entry control. Fix this always. And yaw will be always facing here. And roll will be always tangent. If it's a circular orbit, it will be tangent. Tangent to the orbit. That is, is that. So local vertical local orbit is that. So what you have to see now, you look at the body coordinate now. The body coordinate. Now, why I say, you see, let's say the body coordinate is x, y, z. Let's say this is the body coordinate, x, y, z. It's in the middle, right? Let's say I establish x, y, z. In the x, y, z, for space mechanics, if this, this rotates, it doesn't really matter because it is still a center. So it is insensitive. So the same coordinate system, I can use it basically as my body coordinate. That's how it is. Same, if I use the body coordinate, my body coordinate is actually the coordinate which is fixed to the body. So what happened that we don't, we don't uh, have a variation, or rather we don't talk about the variation because in uh, space mechanics we do point mass. So we don't talk about any variation in terms of the uh, uh, what's that, uh, initial. So by here, yes. So this body. How this body is with respect to my local vertical, local horizontal, it's the definition of attitude. Period. Done. Nothing else. That is attitude. So I must make sure if I want a perfect, perfect mission, I must always have my Y. Y body must be always here. My Z body is always here. My X body is always here, but exception to it, huh? my Y body is basically, if you, if you really you do the derivation, it actually is projection of this. It is supposed to be here, on this, the, the vector is here, on that direction. So it's a projection, so it's going to be negative to this here. Because remember, right hand rules, so when you have even a, let's say you do a, you have top, so it will be a basically in an up direction. So towards the down, so practically it's a projection. But don't worry about this derivation. We will derive this again nicely so that you can have that actual equation finally. But please understand the concept. Uh, attitude uh, control, the two coordinates are here. Orbit control, the coordinates are here and here. Let's see. Requirement. As I said, it can be 10 years, 8 years, it doesn't matter. Yeah? You, must, uh, you must work for 10 years without any rest. That is the active control system's uh, job. So amazing, right? Eh? 
So we must design some very, very robust systems. We must design a very, very robust system. Okay? Uh, do I believe you have know, no opportunity for maintenance? This is a very, I think, uh, in a satellite technology, as we mentioned this before, uh, very, very uh, prone to failure. So, what? For active control system, our redundancy policy is important, especially. Now, there is two redundancy that you can do. You can do software redundancy, you can do hardware redundancy. You, you try to do hardware redundancy, better fly two satellites separately. That's what happens when, say, in GPS, for example. GPS has a lot of satellites, right? Clusters of satellites. They have also backup satellites flown together. Because then if you want to do a backup in a high unit, in a what is that? Uh, uh, backup, backup of uh, what is that? Uh, equipment. Uh, then uh, you might as well just uh, just have another system, the hardware. Uh, can you imagine? Let's say you have five subsystems, and you want to have a hardware redundancy on the five system. It's practically another satellite, you know. <laughs> uh, let's say a, a satellite has five system, and then you, you you say I want to redundant and I want to make sure every have a backup. That means my my, my battery fails, I have one backup. So you will have another set another satellite in here. My well just separate this. So you don't do hardware redundancy, you only will do uh, software redundancy. But in a very, very critical uh, uh, system. You may compromise yourself to do one out of the five. You may have one redundant. Yes, that's possible. We will see that in a, in an active control system, uh, there is some redundancy policy that we do major in a software. But there are hardware redundancy that we do, but very very minimal. We have to. Now, please understand this also. When active control system fails, mission is gone. Done. You are you are as good as so, which means that maybe hardware policy is important. So, chances of a battery failing is well lower. Even a battery fail, maybe you can actually reduce the mission, but mission can still fly. But if your ACS or active control system fails, you are done. You are going to do this. What you can do with this? It's just another debris flying over planet Earth. You can see and just say bye bye. That's it. Nothing else. Definition quick ones control loop systems. Okay? Process. This is again, you would have seen this in control system. There is a process. Plant. And the plant will come with the models, disturbance models, something disturbing the plant. In our case, the plant is a satellite, disturbance is the environment, we need to quantify it. So this is a, there's a job for you to do this. There's a job. Second job, measurement. You must have sensors to measure. How to measure? Well, there's another job for us to do this master. Actuation. Okay, I need to crack. What can I use? I have this option. How to actuate? How to control these actuators? Another job for us this semester. Control algorithm. Must put everything together so that they are working together. How can we do this? Yes, we can. We have done control system. So here almost you are there, but you are not at there. But this, 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 and then you can bring it together. And this you have you have done. Assume that that part that you have done control system is very, very similar to here. This is what you've done. This is very, very familiar. Algorithm or controller, actuator, hardware, disturbance. You cannot see sometimes, so it is not hardware. If you go and open the satellite, you only will see this, this, and this. You won't see this. Please understand. You go and open the satellite. You can, can where is the controller? You can find it. Where is the actuator? Yes. Where is the sensor? There. Where is the where is the Where is the plant? The plant is well. This is the plant. But where is the plant? The plant is a model. 
and you don't also see this. But you can see this. The output, you won't, you won't see, but you can, you can feel it, you can measure it. But this is actually what happens to the actual controller, or uh, the process, or rather the plant. Okay. Orbit motion. Orbital motion, circular, these are the typical orbits that we have learned. Uh, this is again, I want to just uh, clearly define. We are very close, but we are different. Very, very close. People sometimes get very, very confused with orbit and aspect control because it's you know, very close, but yet it is different. Okay? So, again, this is basically our orbit corrections are always impulse shape. That means what? Impulse means you have learned this in uh, satellite technology, propulsion system. On, so let's say 0 0.1 meter, one, minute, one second, so it's impulse. Okay, it gives you impulse just like that and close. It's open, close. Propulsion system, open, close. That's it. Attitude, open, you don't close until the mission dies. So, that's the difference. Let's do that. Uh, it's also 2D basically. Uh, for each and every axis, how we want to evaluate the axis, what I say is 2D is this. You know, the whole system is 3D. Don't get uh, confused. The whole system is a 3D dimensional system. What I say for each and every axis, we evaluate it as, as if as a 2D. Because remember this, I told you. This moves, you only see this moving. This is what I'm saying. Same goes for the other two. If this moves, you only see this 2D this thing move. You don't see this thing. This is what I'm saying. That's how we, we, we build the equations like that. But it is a 3 degrees of, of uh, uh, what is that, uh, degree of freedom system. Okay? 3 degrees of freedom system. Now, uh, when you say that disturbance, huh? disturbance, that's a disturbance outside. So it is, it is actually a BIMO system. Maybe you have heard of BIMO. BIMO is the bounded input and bounded output. Your input is bounded by the actual disturbance. Your output as well. Okay? So both are basically bounded. So we need to write the, the boundary conditions here. Excellent process also. Excellent process. You see, look at that. We need to also know. For example, there are aero, aerodynamic. You have, you have you understood, you understood this in a control in a space mechanics. There are aerodynamic perturbations. There are gravity kind of perturbations. There are magnetic perturbations. There are solar pressure perturbations also. All of them are going to uh, disturb our Keplerian elements. Six Keplerian elements. Okay. But how we are going to actually do And look at the, the nature of that. It is actually with respect to the orbital frequency. That means uh, as long as you are alive, there are people disturbing you, you know. You cannot run away. Every second they are disturbing you. This is the worst compared to even the in orbital mechanics. In orbital mechanics, you can remember them only once in a year. But here, every second you cannot forget them. They are all because they are function of orbital frequency. And they are constant, and there are they are nature also. So they have constant ones hitting you. They are harmonic ones. The constant one is terrible because constant one keep on actually pushing you up. The harmonic one will push you up and pull you down, push you up and pull you down. So you are not going anywhere actually. Yeah, you're going up and going down. It's okay. You are not going up. This is that. So the process, the process that we, we want to do, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm back to my uh, definition uh, of my whole control loop that you have defined. You have learned that in control system, I am redefining for my purpose here, which is the process. What process is this? Additive kinematics must be there, which means is this. In order for me to know how this can react with this, I need to establish 
a relation. Yes, I need to know how. How can I bring this to here? I need to have a model here. I need to understand how this will react. I need to model this. So in order for me to do that, I need active kindness. I need to establish that kindness. I need to establish with respect to This is ideal, right? This is what you want. If let's say your body coordinate, body coordinate remains as local vertical, local horizontal, do you have any problem? You won't have any problem. But the fact remains that they are not like that. Every time they are not. They are always having this. Look. They have an ankle here. Always they have that. Why? Because somebody is just saying, look, somebody is pushing this. Who is doing this? All the disturbance, aerodynamic, uh, you have all these guys are doing. They have an they are disturbing. So when they disturbing, you become like that. So when you become like that, let me draw. Yes. You have this. Ideally, the two must be on Y. The three must be on the side. The one must be on your X. No problem. No problem. You don't need anything. Okay. Then look at this big, big group now. Attitude determination. My God, so many things that we can look at. We can look at planet Earth. Okay, I'm telling you. So, for example, when I'm going to fly to planet Earth, I know planet Earth is there. I look at planet Earth, then I know planet Earth is there, right? Remember, I told you always open your eyes when you do attitude control. Eyes will be open. So when you see that, okay. But when you turn the other way around, can you see the sun? If the, oh sorry, can you see the planet Earth? You can't, but you will see the sun. Sun is here. Planet Earth is there. I can see the planet Earth, I can see the sun. So which means that I can use the Earth and sun as my guidance. You okay, know, okay, very good. This can be my source. Geomagnetic field. Geomagnetic field has intensity, right? Very near to planet Earth is very strong. Further to planet Earth is very weak. We can use that. Let's use that. Gyroscope. Aircraft is gyroscope. Why can't we use it? Spacecraft. We use that also. So at least we know. We know we can. There is two bodies, two things actually we need to be. We will tell exactly after what exactly that we need to have. Please do look at all the measurements. And this is extremely, extremely important. All these are very, very important. Look at the measurement. Now, what you want to establish, what you need? You need the attitude, which is the angle. When you have a roll your pitch, you will have to have the roll your pitch angle. And another one, you need to have the ray. These are the two quantities that you need to have to do as we control. Remember. So this measurement should take care of that. It should give me the information. Then I can actually have on my control system. Force generation. Ah. Please put this into perspective, please. Force generation can be only done by clusters, propulsion system. But this propulsion system is quite unique. If you correctly put it, it can give you translation motion. If you put it otherwise, it can give you the rotational motion. You put a cluster here, it can give you translation motion. You put a cluster here and you put a cluster downward, it can give you a rotational motion. Can be used for attitude and can be used for uh, what is that orbital control. But more important, where you are going to put your divergence, that means your clusters. That is important. Then you have a top generation. So for top generation, how to generate the top? So this one here, uh, force generation, force and top generation can be can be by clusters. Here, there is only, only top generation, only top, thrusters, only top, both can 
Matthew calls momentarily. We will see how they look like later. Yeah? Now, Tom is rotational. Okay? So therefore, active you want rotational. So related to rotational. Control. There are activities that you are going to do. Rate and pin. Why rate? When you need a, we will do an exercise when you really understand that when you want more torque, that the change of speed, let's say you are cycling, constant speed. But if you want to increase the speed, you need to cycle faster. That means what you have to give more torque. How to generate this torque? This generate can be, uh, this torque can be generated if your speed increase from one to another. So there is a change of angular velocity. And change of angular velocity will give change of torque. So rate dumping is needed. Why? Because when you want torque, when you want this attitude always changing, you need something which is some torque keep on changing. Now in order for us to keep on changing the torque, we need to keep on increasing the speed, right? The velocity. That means you have to keep on cycling too high, up to maximum. Then you can't cycle anymore. Then what do you want to do? You need to slow down. Huh? That is called rate. Dump. Then if you need more for torque, then you start cycling again. That's, please understand, that's how the explanation goes. Then you have a, a rotation around three uh, uh, predefined axis. This is basically to get that. This is a you can do slow maneuvers. This one. I want you to point here, planet Earth. I want you to point forty-five degrees from here. Ah, this this action can be also done when you give you know, enough of top. Huh? Top is when you turn you turn you. Rotation, momentum management. When you have a rate dumping, yeah, rate dumping means what? That means you have more and more torque. When you have more and more torque, obviously you should have a change of momentum. Okay? Momentum H or L is J omega. Initial times by what? Angular velocity. Okay, J omega. So change of angular momentum is torque. That is basic. All of us know that. So when this keep, this keep on increasing, you need to manage the momentum. That's what it says. You need to manage so that's why you keep on cycling maximum. Can you keep on cycling maximum for the rest of your life? You can't. They are operating five years or ten years. So they will, they only cycle to give you torque. Only maximum. Are you going to leave them to the maximum speed for the rest of their life? No, they will die. Bring them back to the normal speed again. When you need to ask them, they will cycle for you. That's how the whole system works. Constant pointing. Goal is always deviation is zero. Means this. You will uh, you will get a, a good uh, uh, linear uh, linearity. Uh, we will learn. We will learn. We will see. 
Okay, sir. Okay, now I will repeat this. Today is the first day you will be exposed to all this device. Now, you you need to master all this device towards the end of this semester. So when I maybe at the 13th week or 12th week, I will ask you. Uh, the what is the principle and what device is that and how what is the limitation when to use this okay look I divided nicely for you sensors and actuators sensors you know from which the plant you know right where to put here actuators here okay let's go back there you go. Sensors. Remember, I told you, magnetic field can be sensor also. Optics can be sensor. Why? You have sun, you have earth, you have star. I forgot. Actually, we have star. Yeah. Then you have a diode. Yeah, you can use it in aircraft. Why not use it in spacecraft also? And this is a limitation. Orbit knowledge. Yes, available. Eclipse, you can't. Sun, eclipse, gone. Earth, no bad. Only for low, low Earth orbit. But if you are in a very high Earth orbit, let's say just this little orbit, Earth sensor might be in, uh, in effect. Okay. Star sensor is no problem, but very expensive. Very, very expensive compared to other sensors. Huh? No issue. But uh, don't forget, limited of a field of view, obviously, but it is very accurate compared to others. Gyro, no attitude information. No, it means that what? You need an initial attitude information. That is always a problem with gyro. Okay? So, that calibration, that initial uh, uh, initiation attitude is what, once you give, you actually start uh, refining. Yeah? So, this is the algorithm to do this. Okay. Measurement actuator. Again, we can use measure. We can, we can measure with geomagnetic uh, field. Magnetometers we can measure. I think you have seen in uh, the lab magnetometers. Uh, magnetic field we can use as an actuator and coil. Magnetic coil will become a magnet. Magnet, magnet, force. The other one just sense what is the intensity of the magnetic field. That's all the difference. Then a reaction wheel, it is just a wheel which rotates. You cycle, remember the story of cycle. You cycle fast, you give torque. So imagine you have three axes, you cycle here, cycle here, cycle here. Keep on cycling, you want more, more talk, keep on cycling, you give. You give up talk here, give up talk here, give up talk here. But you reach maximum, you can't sit on more. You need to actually slow down. Otherwise, you end up dying. Okay, so need to do that clearly. Then you have a propulsion system also. Uh, you can do two gravity gradient. This we will uh, give you an example. Uh, when you see Newton's law has also taught, taught us how basically this gravity is going to act. The more you go, the less pull. So let's say you're nearer, this, this pull is stronger. So when this pull is stronger, there is this motion it can have, right? So if I can cleverly do this motion, it can turn into also a torque. This one. Because you pull here more, because you're nearer to planet Earth, this tilts up. So that is yeah. Then you have aerodynamic. You can also do an aerodynamic uh, uh, as an actuator. Uh, I think uh, we, are, we are exploring this now in the, in the department. Uh, how to basically uh, do aerodynamic, use aerodynamic torques basically to do actuation. And solar panels. Solar panels, uh, uh, this is solar pressure. It's different. We can even use the solar panels basically to to uh, get uh, uh, torque basically yeah? uh, but more important okay you see that solar pressure because uh, sun sun has a uh, solar ray and you have a photon proton hits the surface surface basically uh, proton has mass and then hits the surface and surface can be tilted if you keep on hitting first can tilted so cleverly you, you put the surface along the sun then you can get that torque but unfortunately, in Eclipse, you can't, you can't use this. Uh, 
uh, typical satellite. All those items which I have uh, what is that uh, mentioned practically. Uh, you have uh, uh, gyro one. Uh, this is the uh, initial reference unit, uh, initial reference system, uh, gyros. You have uh, reaction thrusters, sun sensors. Uh, you have uh, momentum wheel, sun sensors. All those. These are just to tell you how you are going to actually bring all these uh, systems basically uh, in, into, into play. Yeah? All right. If you want to put all of them together, this is what you're going to have. The model. This is all goes into your active control, active operating system. Okay. All this is what you can't, you can't, you can't see. This. this is what happens. Okay. Explain. You have a active control law, which is the plant, and you have the actuator. Just now, actuator gives the actuation to the satellite, satellite moves, somebody detects, who detects, sensor detects, sensor tell you, hey, you will move uh, one degree, again goes to the control law, control system again tells him, hey, move back another degree, this goes on and on and on. Orbit is the same, capturing element, X, Y, Z, measure, sensor, you have a, a orbit determination done, and you can inject here. Remember, here I have I have the dotted line. Huh? You can inject here and calculate, and then accordingly command orbit control system to release. Because assume you are using the uh, clusters here also, then the command can be coupled here. Okay. So this is just uh, just telling you this is not independent. Is this is supposed to be orbit determination goes here. Come back here, sensor. But this can be coupled because I have my control law also for my clusters here. Cluster can do orbit, uh, orbit control. So you can calculate together and then fit back here. What how much you want to control the orbit? Remember the daily job is here. Daily job is here. This one maybe two times or three times a year, if necessary. Okay. Typical task or more additive acquisition. You want to actually do this is that when uh, typically what you want to do is that when you want to after you the launcher launches the satellite first you want to do active acquisition. So you do earth sun, earth pointing sun. You want to know where you are. Ah, uh, earth is here. Sun is at the back. So this is what you do. First thing. So you know where you are. Second, safe attitude. This is basically you want to save power. For example, there's some problem in your aircraft, I mean a spacecraft. What do you do? You go into this mode saying that I'm just going to actually make sure I have enough of power. Remember, power is the most important thing to operate. Enough of power, my thermal conditions are all good. Mission bought. No mission. Safe mode, no mission. Safe mode means just survive first. Just survive first. Okay. Nominal, fantastic. So three typical phases are there. After launcher, launcher takes you to the point, inject, at your equation. This is actually when you have a problem, then you go and say more. Mission, mission will not be on here. Mission will not be on here. At your equation, no mission. No mission. Nominal, yes, mission. What is your mission? Earth of the mission, nominal mode. This is something very interesting. For those who have already uh, learned rocket technology, please look into this. This is exactly where Earth will, I mean, uh, uh, active control system comes in. You already look at the sequence. Already you start. Start the acquisition, basically. You start the process. Okay, 1 to 30, this is very very familiar because we have done the launcher, remember? So, this is just the process. Please go through this quickly, then you know where uh, uh, given a uh, injection date, injection time, up to the nominal mode. 
we will work on this transmission sequence. Plus, uh, is a grocery. All the groceries that throughout the five years. So please uh, uh, take this as a uh, as a uh, reference. Okay. With that, uh, we will slowly start uh, going uh, going deeply or deep diving into uh, the subject matter.